And we will have Dr. Fulton and Mr. Storms from the Raleigh Junior High, along with the students and staff. Good evening. Good evening. I have a great team with me tonight, so I get to do very little talking, and they're going to do um, to do all of it. Yeah. I'm learning. Delegate. It's great. So tonight, let me introduce the team that I have with me. I have Mrs. Liz Berry. She is the, uh, our leader of our home and school partnership that she'll be talking about tonight and our parent involvement. Mr. Storms, my assistant principal. I have Mrs. Dent, seventh grade math. And I have Mrs. Snicker, seventh grade math. They are both the leaders of the student ambassadors and with student ambassadors tonight. I have Amari Terrell and I have Jessica Pritchett and I have Mackenzie McCarter. And they're going to be all talking tonight, so you'll get to hear from them, because it's their school. So as we start, I will start off with what I handed you so you can read and have a copy. Is just a brief overview of 2016 and 17. On there, you will be able to see the items that we have met or ongoing. Rolla Junior High is unique this year. We have all brand new students and half of a new staff. So we get to kind of redo things. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because I want to focus on the transition and what our students have to say. But you do have this document in front of you. So I would like to introduce to you at this time Mr. Storms, who will start off with goal one. Good evening. Good evening. It's amazing that the year's gone by and here we are. So. Presenting this time in October is a, this is a lot different. We, we didn't get to experience the audit before we got ready. So, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to be uh, talking you, with you. You need to about, say that one more time for Mrs. Gorman. She was yes. <laughs> I, uh, Mrs. Gorman, uh, I've never gotten to do this process without the audit first, so I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> um, our, our goal one is uh, to improve the climate and culture as evidenced in the reduction of discipline, data, and feedback from surveys. Um, I'm going to be talking about some talking points. Uh, please feel free to ask me questions. Um, and I'm going to try to make some explanations of some new things. And if, you, if I happen to uh, use some jargon you're not familiar with, Ms. Clayton, somebody else, please let me know. And I'll try to clarify that. Um, <clears throat> The first one, which is the new one that I'll take a little bit of time to explain, is uh, we are looking into the use of restorative practices in our daily school environment. And you might say, what are restorative practices? Those are something that's uh, a very catching on trend in education. And they, they are based upon focus around relationships. And restorative practices teach students how to keep strong, positive relationships and how to repair harm when harm is done with relationships. And so uh, we have a, a committee that is uh, currently our restorative committee and we are all piloting and researching right now some restorative practices. I have researched these over the summer and we have implemented some of those which I'm gonna talk about, but that's what restorative practices are and we are going to continue using those with the students this year to help improve that climate and reduce discipline numbers by having more positive relationships and less conflict in all areas of the school. Um, our students right now that, that do serve uh, detention for you know misconduct or incidents, etc., they. They, part of their process, whether there is, they complete a restorative reflection that helps them, you know, kind of look back on where they're at 
and what relationships they affected and what needs might be done by them to repair them. So um, the, the second thing that I was going to mention about is our we're striving to increase our, our parent involvement and engagement at RGH. Um, Mrs. Ferry is going to visit with you about our homeschool partnership with the parents, which I think is a great thing. And uh, it's been a nice learning thing for all of us. A lot of that is done on Facebook. She'll talk more about that as far as communication. We've had an internet safety night. <clears throat> We've had a pregame ball game tailgate with uh, our parents and our students. We've had a suicide prevention night. And we plan to do some more. Um, we are currently we have surveyed our parents and we'll survey our, have surveyed our students. We just did that with conferences so that we can identify the needs that we feel like that, that they're telling us that the students need. And because we're, we're looking to meet this goal by continually asking ourselves, are we meeting the needs of our students? which relates directly to our new mission and vision, which you'll see in the top and the bottom left of each of our slides, which is every student every day, and RJH is a community committed to students and learning. <clears throat> um, we are going to be providing more communication. We currently have, and we're looking at ways to communicate with parents, but we have daily announcements, monthly newsletters, um, school messenger, website, uh, and we are uh, ongoing with our web page and looking at, you know, options as those things continue to evolve and changes. Um, our student ambassador organization, which they came with us, and I'm going to let them talk about exactly what they do, but their focus is, is service learning and reduction of bullying to prove, provide a better climate for students and a safer place. And then <clears throat> we have implemented, selected uh, weekly character lessons, which we teach in our pride class that the kids have each day. And these character lessons allow us to focus on the things that we feel our students need, everything from things such as study skills to um, to uh, organization skills, to being a responsible team and interacting and keeping positive relationships and communicating with home. And so we also continue to review our, our training discipline data. And if we have a need, we can implement lessons within this, this plan cycle that we have to respond to any. And, and so far we have, we have had good discipline data that we have not seen a need to respond to a, uh, out of parameters. We, we are looking at ways to reduce tardies, but we are always looking at ways to improve that. Um, I did have one uh, tidbit of information that I, I meant to share with you about uh, parent involvement and in conferences. We had conferences last night, and we had the best attendance that I believe we've ever had at RJH. Of our 617 students, we had 423 parents or guardians come pick up grade cards, see teachers, which is 69%. And I think we've reached the 60s some in the years past. But So some of our efforts there, which was calling parents and positive postcards and other things we've talked about in communication that all our staff has done this year seem to be paying off. And it may be a little bit related to our younger group of kids. But we're, we're happy to have more parent involvement in those, and our goal is to continue to, to keep that and continue to learn from our surveys and grow that. <clears throat> we uh, also are continuing to use our programs that we have established to help students, whether it be academically or behaviorally, so that we can keep our school climate safe, secure, and the students getting the best educational environment that they need. Any questions? Okay. Well, I'm going to turn it over to the next group. Thank you for the time to share with you this evening. Thank you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, 
I first want to say that I was really excited to be asked to be a part of the Holman School Partnership up at the junior high. It's really, really great to see so many teachers and parents wanting to try to change things up a little bit and do things a little different to try to see what see what works. Um, our goal in creating the Home and School Partnership was to step away from the PTO mindset of fundraising and to kind of shift towards fostering good relationships and avenues of communication for parents and teachers. I feel like a lot of parents get very intimidated when they hear PTO and um, they just they, all they think of is well I don't I don't have a lot of time to give you I don't have a lot of money to give you so what we wanted to do was actually change the focus from that to um, having different having different workshops and stuff that would actually help the parents learn more about their students, more about their kids. Um, one of the things that we are working on is finding workshops that actually um, cover issues that are relevant to junior high aged kids. So some of the workshops we did were on cyberbullying and internet safety and suicide prevention. Um, a lot of people don't like to touch on those subjects because they're kind of touchy, you know, and people don't want to believe that those may apply to their kids, but they really do, especially in that age bracket. So um, those were a few workshops that we did. Our attendance for those workshops wasn't as high as we had hoped it to be, but we've learned from that and we've learned to just um, different ways of marketing on Facebook, which we created a Facebook page um, to the, where we host events too. And we've learned that we can live stream. And some parents like that because they can stay at home, they can go home from work, and they can click play, and they can still get the information so um, without having to actually leave their house. So that's, that's a great thing too. We had 130 views on yes, live stream. 130 views. I think that's fantastic. So, um, and that was on the suicide prevention workshop so so it was we're really excited about that so we're going to keep trying to um, see what works and hopefully we have a lot of eager parents ready to learn more about ways to make life better for their students um, a few of the things that we've done is we did a tailgate party at the high school at one of the 7th and 8th grade football games. And that was actually a lot of fun. Um, we handed out hot dogs and had lots of parents come and help grill and um, pass food out. And the kids had so much fun. I think we had one of the kids on the 8th grade football team came and like stacked up his plate as high as he could with hot dogs. <laughs> and then he came back. He's like, I'm not allowed to take all these. <laughs> it, was, it was really cute. But um, it was... It was a lot of fun, and um, we did that all free, but we did take some donations um, for anyone who wanted to donate, and what we're trying to do is find appropriate ways to help improve, improve the quality of the students' time at the school. So all, any money that is raised will go towards directly towards um, doing something for the kids. So um, we have a couple more events coming up. Um, we're going to have a parent night where we're actually going to decorate the school for the winter season to try to make things a little less institutional and more like home. So um, that'll be a lot of fun. And um, we're also going to put on a semi-formal winter dance, which I've gotten a lot of excitement over so far. So um, one thing we did over the summer was we actually gathered sponsorship to pay for t-shirts for all of the students to get at registration. So every kid had a shirt before their first day of school. And that was actually really exciting. Um, it was a little, it was, I had a touching moment <laughs> um, during registration night where um, one, one family came up to sign up. We had a ton of parents sign up to be a part of the home and school partnership. It was unbelievable to me. Um, we, um, this one family came up and the girl was so excited. I'm like, did you get your t-shirt? And she goes, I get a shirt. How much is it? And I was like, it's free. And um, she's like, mom, I get to wear something new for school this year. And it's just something I wouldn't have thought of, you know, the kids not getting new school clothes. And so she was so excited. And I see those kids wearing those shirts all the time, all, all over the place. So it's, I'm so happy that they were able to get those. Um, we really do look forward to developing the Home and School Partnership so it can be a useful tool for the Rolla Junior High. And definitely check out our Facebook page. It's the RJH Home and School Partnership on Facebook. And we're going to be posting events. And if you have any suggestions, feel free to let us know. <laughs> so are there any questions on that? I, yes. I, I just have a question. I don't know if you or Dr. Fulton, but, you know, we're doing a book study on parent engagement and mm -hmm. involvement. So when you're hosting these meetings that you have in like the suicide, the bullying, mm -hmm. 
is that from parent input, what the parents want, or is that something that you all have thought would be good for parents? Or are you, you know what I, I mean? I think that's like, more. <laughs> so when we, when we set the topics, we did it last spring. Um, based upon what we had input from just the little group, the leadership committee. The parent survey that we did last night is asking the parent in regards to topics as far as what they would want to see. So I haven't had a chance to look at those because they were done on paper. So as soon as we do that, that data will then drive what we do in the spring. Because I think that would be just exceptional. Because I think one thing I've realized reading this book is that often as educators, we think we know what the parents want, but mm -hmm. to actually ask them what they want, what would help them with their child, I think that's so key. So that's interesting. I'll be interested to see what some of the topics are. We um, have been playing with our Facebook page, and so we found a polling thing and so one of the things we ask is do you want to see things stream live and we got a few responses not many really did it but we'll try it again and they said yes so we streamed it live and um, yeah and so we've and not all the people were there that night which was really neat because I can go back and then watch and see how many views and as of last night it was hundred and thirty and we only had 15 people in attendance so when I was at a, heard a speaker at our principal's conference, Principal Cafele said, I do a lot of talks and I do them online and I stream and I only may have two people in front of me and a camera, but I reach a lot of audience. Mm -hmm. So we're trying different ways to reach out to people to where they're at. Yeah. And so, Thank you. Mm -hmm. you know, one of the things this, this brings up that I, I think is really good is, as Jane said, we're looking at family engagement. You know, and, and you instantly think about how can schools increase the engagement of families with their schools. Um, and we've already read a little bit about how some people, the reason, one of the reasons they may not be engaged in the schools is that they have sort of have this, in, in, this uh, inner uh, resistance to school administrators or to mm -hmm. teachers. But when you have parents urging other parents, mm -hmm to become engaged, that, that's a, that can be a very effective tool. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're starting to get to the age of kids when they want their parents less involved. Right. Right. Absolutely. So. One of the interesting comments I had last night from a parent who's been very involved in at every meeting, she goes, well, my daughter told me I didn't have to come. The teacher said so. And she goes, oh, no, 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 no. And I said, well, it kind of comes from that pushback of we don't, we don't really want you here. And she goes, well, that's not going to happen. We're showing up. So, yeah, so right. it was really good to hear. Right. I would like to thank Mrs. Sperry for all the work that she's done because she's really done a great job and, and she continues to work hard. And so um, we, we're going to have a dance. You're all welcome to come. Teachers don't have to work that night, so that's going to all be parent-led. So I will be there, but it, it will all be whole. That's awesome. So I'd like to bring up Mrs. Snicker and Mrs. Dent to talk about our transition. Hi guys, um, I'm Mrs. Snitker, and this is my third year at Rolla and Go Bulldogs. And so uh, I do love it here. I want to talk about, um, I'm going to talk about the transition before we came over to the junior high as far as what Monica did for us to make it a smooth transition over from the middle school to the junior high. And it was just uh, phenomenal. I felt like from you know, late winter, early spring, we got this packet, and it just had so much information in it, so many details outlining exactly what to expect, exactly what to pack up out of our room, what we should keep there, how to pack it, um, where the pallets were going to be. I mean, it was so detailed, and there was really nothing that was left out of there, and so um, that really helped us out, and so that made the transition easy and then even coming over you know and moving our stuff into the rooms it was it was almost like it was magic i just couldn't believe that it just made it over there the way that it did you know <laughs> all of that scary. stuff it's very moving it was it was you know it was just like you know a wand was uh you know waved around and then everything was over in our room uh but monica has been phenomenal since you know even all of last year she wasn't even our administrator at that time but she was always coming over, visiting with the seventh grade team that was coming over, uh, talking to us, providing us with any information, uh, providing meeting times. And so it was, 
Monica Fulton, she was, both Monicas were just phenomenal in leading the transition to this year. So I just wanted to kind of talk about what happened beforehand, but Mrs. Dent's going to talk about when we got over there. You weren't supposed to talk that long and make me look I'm bad. sorry. <laughs> so um, I just want to talk about the transition as a faculty member, um, how I felt. Um, I know most of you, and I started teaching here when my middle one was nine months old, and he shares a birthday with the one and only Jamie Myers, so happy birthday to Adam and, and Jamie. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> I will. And you always tell them happy birthday on, on Facebook, so thank you. Um, so I was comfortable at the middle school. It's always what I consider to be my home. And I am not fearful of change, but I won't, I'm not going to lie, maybe a little reluctant a little bit. Hi, Ashley. <laughs> um, so, but as Tori said, you know, the transition really started in the fall of 2016. And that definitely was helpful because not only did it get our minds thinking about what was to come and what we needed to do to prepare, but it gave us a long time to prepare mentally um, and to see what it was going to be like. I mean, I knew a lot of the teachers at the junior high, but it has been a very smooth transition of meshing the old with the new. So, and everyone that I have talked to has, has said the same thing. Everybody's in agreement that it has been a smooth ride. So, it's been good. So. Hello, uh, my name is Omari Terrell and I am a representative of Student Ambassadors. Um, Student Ambassadors is a small club made up of 7th and 8th graders and we try to make a positive impact on our community, such as the school. Um, we focus on anti-bullying, guide dogs, and community services and we just try to make our school better every single day. So we made this video, and uh, we hope you like it. So that was basically a short snippet of what we try to do, which is um, make our environment a better environment for our classmates and the classmates to come. So is there any questions? I 
was curious, what is Socktober? That's all. Oh, you're going to talk about it. <laughs> okay, thank all you. Right. All right, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jessica Pritchett, and I am also a student ambassador representative. Um, I'm going to talk about Socktober and our anti-bullying um, awareness. Uh, Socktober is a campaign to donate new socks for students in need. So far, we have about 100 socks, and we're going to donate them to a community service in Rolla. Um, the second thing is anti-bullying awareness. October is a anti-bullying awareness month. We have hung posters around the school so far in October, and we're going to hand out candy with little notes on them. And um, we just want to make sure that our slogan, I guess, is Bulldogs are not bullies. So we just really want to get that to like the point that Bulldogs shouldn't bully other people. So you guys have any questions? Great slogan. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Mackenzie McCarter, and I'm also a Rolla Junior High student ambassador. Today I'll be talking to you guys about the technology changes from the middle school to the junior high. At the middle school, there was very few carts, where at the junior high, there's very many. Because of the very few carts at the middle school, the children were not able to always be doing their homework, checking their grades, because teachers were always scrambling for the carts. We're at the junior high. We're at the junior high teachers, there's either a Chromebook card or an iPad card in every classroom where students are always able to be doing their homework on all of their free time or checking their grades, which teachers like. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can have a question maybe okay. back for uh, Jessica. Jessica. Yes. And that is, do you, have you seen a decrease in bullying? Do you think? I think so. Uh, there hasn't been like I think so because, like, not very many, like, I haven't seen anybody really get bullied this year. Uh -huh. um, I think it's really, like, decreased because before you probably saw people, like, picking on each other and stuff. But, like, this year I've seen people, like, helping people when they drop their stuff in the hallway and just, like, if somebody needs you to take their stuff somewhere for them, then people are, like, helping other people out a lot. So your attitudes are making kind of the whole climate of culture change to where kindness is going to be. Yeah. I just want to say one thing uh, else about student ambassadors. Um, in the spring, the eighth grade, eighth graders uh, went through a training. Um, it was, what, several hours, one evening. Yeah, um, to be a leader of, of the building. And then we incorporated the seventh graders. And we have about 10 seventh graders. 10 eighth graders and I have been really impressed they are definitely a group of great leaders they have stepped up to the plate they remember to do things that I forget like Thursdays are recycling days at the at the junior high and they remember to come and get the key for me so that they can get back in the building after they go and get the the um, uh, the recycle bins and they go class to class to get the recycle bins and so they're they're on the ball so I'm really proud of them and I know I look forward to the things that they are that they are wanting to do because all of these are their ideas. You know, when it says good idea, they all have good ideas. So I'm very proud of them. The one thing they didn't talk about, which I have on the screen, is our student orientation. This year in August, before registration, we hosted an orientation day for seventh grade and an orientation day for eighth grade. These are just a few of the pictures, including our day from our. Uh, Eclipse, which was at the beginning of the year. So, and then you have registration up in the top right. Um, our teachers did a great job organizing the student orientation and being there and having activities for the students to engage them early and to build those relationships and, and to teach them how to move around the building because that was very important. So. Thank you to all of our speakers. They've done a great job. So now you're down to me. And this will go quick. So one of the things that we have a goal at Rolla Junior High last year was to increase and put a technology in the hands of every teacher and student in order to decrease the barriers to saying, well, we can't use them or we don't have that. So one of the things that we did last year and our goal was to put 
a device or a Chromebook cart in every classroom, some type of device. If you look at 1617, when I was here last year, we had about 550 devices through different things, and we have actually taken out some entire rooms of computer, desktop computers and increased the number of Chromebooks. We now have a total of 739 different Chromebooks or iPads, laptops, and I included the desktop computers in there because we do have two computer labs to use. We met that goal. Now we're going to expand that goal for 1718 and look to putting devices within health classrooms or other classrooms that may need them as we continue to grow our technology integration at Rolla Junior High. <coughs> goal three talks about um, our academic performance. Our students have done very well and while we are brand new. One of the things I do want to show you is I want, would like to revisit our MAP scores from last year. Even though the MAP, score, the MAP tests are being redone, I, we are still proud of what we've done. And when we look at all of our scores, we are either right at or just slightly below or way above the state average. Very proud of our teachers and students for that. But our two areas of focus this year will be English language arts and math. This year in math, we tried a different philosophy in seventh grade. We have opened up more classes of pre-algebra, whereas there used to be 60 students, we've now opened that up to be over 100 to increase the rigor, to see how that helps students and to give them more offerings as they enter high school. Because if we get them into algebra at eighth grade, they can go on to geometry in ninth grade, et cetera. So that's one of the things that we're trying this year. In eighth grade, we're looking at the students who are performing low academically and based upon teacher recommendation and putting them in a, in a smaller classroom environment to give them more one-on-one -on -one and to focus on those academic skills that they may be lacking in order to. So it's more of a targeted intervention. On one of the sheets I gave you is a pyramid of interventions. It will probably be the third sheet. And that pyramid of interventions tells you um, at the bottom level, I don't have it on the screen, it's, it's for, well, no, I don't have it on the screen. Those are all school interventions. The next one become, in the next tier is a little bit more targeted, and the very tops is very, very targeted. So that's for you to look at. That is available. It's what we keep track of what we do with our students. And so if we are at this step, then what do we do with the next step? So that is academic and behavioral. So that will kind of give you an idea of how we operate and help kids as we go through. And any kid could be at any level at any point in time based upon need. And before I move on, in English language, art, language arts, I went to a DESE curriculum meeting a few weeks ago and found that in English language arts, they are offering a statewide DESE curriculum um, workshop all year long. We've missed one, but we're going November and in February and in May. Um, all of our... I think six, uh, five out of my six English language arts teachers and myself are all going to Jefferson City to learn more about what is going to be on the new assessment, how they're scoring things, looking at some student writings. I think that's a great opportunity. They had opened up a second cohort and we happened to get in. They had just a few more seats. So we are being blessed using our professional development funds to go learn more about the test, not only for our sake, but for others. They can come back in and share that within their um, vertical curriculum meetings. Monica, why doesn't Desi provide that through a webinar or something so, you do, so people don't have to go all the way to Jefferson City? I mean, I it's think not far for us, but for a lot of schools, that'd be a long way. It is a long way. From what I understand is they are actually doing a lot of hands-on, so you can actually get some coaching and some training, looking at student writing, looking at anchor papers, looking at what they're kind of expecting and looking for. Because as we go through our year, we're going to continue. We rewrote re and looked at curriculum last year, but we're going to continue to refine it as we go through. Something that my seventh grade teachers are struggling with is they've always had a two-hour block for English and reading. This year they have a class of English, and then they have a class of reading, and it very well could be different students. So they're looking at realigning their curriculum and how do they meet the needs of the students with what they have. So we're working on that. What um, the assistant... Um, curriculum commissioner in ELA told me is that they're doing this together so they can build a cohort of people to gather information from teachers all across the state as well as we gather their information for them. So they wanted to do it in person to get this off the ground so they can learn and possibly offer it up later on. 
So I've actually worked with that assistant before. Um, she is an English teacher where I've worked at previously, and she's very knowledgeable. And so for them to have this, have this outreach and to let us be part of it has been wonderful. So we were very, very blessed whenever they offered us that opportunity. So... And so goal four, as we wrap this up, all comes into governance. One of the things that Mr. Storms and I are um, working on is our own professional development leadership as it relates to our survey. I would like to point out that Mr. Storms did finish his specialist degree this, uh, um, this summer. His focus was restorative practices. So, yay! so he's actually taking what he's learned and applying them in, in our building and, and working with teachers and teaching them. Um, we meet constantly with our counselors to respond to kids' needs. That is, that's a wonderful group that I have in my, as far as leadership in our building and the things that we're doing. Um, we all constantly are looking at, as we are creating a new school environment with our teachers, we're surveying them about what they need and how, we're, how we can help learn about them and best meet their needs professionally and academically. And so, and then we're also working to to improve our communication, as Mr. Storm said. One of the things I asked parents on our survey um, that I snuck in there at the last minute is, what social media do you use? So we can try and meet their needs. Are they on Instagram, Facebook, and those things? So we can meet them where they are. I think that's a very important part as we move forward. I'd like to thank you for your support and what you do for us, because we do appreciate everything that you do. We, as a, as a team, and all of our students, are greatly are glad to be here. It's this is the best place to be. You have any questions for us? Thank you. No? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.